Hey, Strafe. How you doing? Oh, John. Hey, John. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, man. How you doing? I might be head, headed uh, to see Bald Man in a little bit here. But we'll see how that goes. Hey, Tom, good to see you. Hey, Tic Tac. Yeah, I'm wanting to. I just got to nail it down with him. Make sure I don't come at an inopportune time. But yeah, I'd love to. That'd be awesome. Hey, hey, Todd, good to see you. Man, that'll be so cool. All right, that'll be so cool. That's even cooler. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Hey, Blades, addicted. Did I step on your toes, Goondocks? It's hard to find a a slot where nobody's nobody's uh, going live. So I just kind of I'm up here taking my Spanish class. So I figured I'd just go live straight off here. I can get these Tic Tacs out of my mouth. One more thing. I didn't realize how much saliva they would produce and be slurring my speech. <laughs> All right. So how y'all doing? Y'all got anything new? I haven't got anything new. Anything new to talk about? I'm going to destroy some uh, meat products later this week. Luckily, you're home with COVID. <laughs> Jeez, is that hitting you hard, or you just kind of sick, or hopefully it's not hard. Hey, Colby, Chug Dude. Chug Dude's coming for me. I don't want none of you, Chug Dude. <laughs> Are you, you think you'll be in Atlanta? That would be awesome. We have many opportunities. <laughs> oh, that would be cool to see everybody in Atlanta. Over to Spider Coach Tenacious and M4. Oh, I saw those out at M4. That's awesome. I love M4. Yeah, that is cool. A budget super steel. That's pretty cool. That would be cool, Chuck, dude. Get down there. Hey, Ali Cord. Okay. See you later. So, everybody that's in here, for right now, I'm going to be selling off a bunch of my knives. So, and pretty much everything is on the table. So, if you've seen something that you want of mine, just let me know. Because I'm going to be sending a box of stuff to Arizona Custom Knives. And so, they, they take a big old chunk of, chunk of it to sell your stuff. I just don't feel like sitting here selling individually right now but i'm also trying to do some other things not besides not knife reviews and stuff but just get some money for some other stuff you'll take my spider cousin i have more spider cousin than most people think of course not to show everybody but i'll probably do a video and just kind of pan over the things that i'm selling and see anybody's interested it's not going to be like free but it's definitely not going to be at the top end of the pricing spectrum there so so just about everything hey cesar how you doing good to see you so i'll be doing that and just some other stuff. I've got a chopping competition in uh, a week. Not this coming up weekend, but the following weekend. i got to go to Oklahoma and do some chopping out there, which is going to kind of be rough. It'll, I'll, I'll do a video for here, Eddie. I'll just post it here that for sale, and then you can y'all can hit me up on Facebook or email me. Or I'll make sure all the directions are out there, but yeah, it'll be here. And if, you know, if you're looking back through old videos and you're like, I wonder if he still has that. 
just hit me up and we'll we'll make a deal. I'm trying to get money together to uh money how it goes, just to get money together. But yeah, um what was I saying? I don't remember. It's not important. It wasn't that important. Oh hey, if y'all are looking for sharpening, like I don't know if y'all do a lot of stropping or sharpening or whatever. I was on Blade Binge, that knife sale website a while back, and I ran into this lady. I guess she's pretty well known. She does uh, these diamond emulsion things for strops. She's on Instagram. Let me go. Hold on one second. Let me see. I don't want to mess up her name, but I just I wanted to say this. She has awesome stuff. Dun, dun, dun. Cutting lace. EDC. Do y'all know Cutting Lace EDC? Her diamond emulsions are awesome. My, I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my thing ready. It's my chopper. I couldn't get it like stropped right. And so I, I went ahead and uh, bought her some of her emulsions. And I was using the, the paste. From that one company that does stones, DMT. Is it DMT? Anyway, so I got her stuff and re redid all my straps and stuff. And I only went up to so she gave me a a five, a, a three, a one, and a point five, I think, and maybe a point one. I don't know, but I only went up to the three, I think, and it it would just take the hairs right off your fingers and arms and wherever you got hairs it'll take it off of so if y'all are looking for stuff to help your stropping out and and i really recommend stropping especially if you're using your knife you're not dinging it up you're not banging it up so let's just say you're cutting through board or cardboard or you know ropes or whatever and it's just getting dull <clears throat> you probably don't need to sharpen it like my my knife i've been practicing chopping and so nothing dulls my knife up quite like that rope like that twisty uh hard rope and i'll go through let's say i do 10 chops and it's not super dull i mean it'll still chop through stuff but it's dull as far as not being able to shave and i'll take it in there and i, I use the the first two emulsions I, I think it's the five and the three that i use and i just i dropped it right out and now it's just just like razor sharp so Oh, I got to catch up over here. Yeah, straight. Yeah, just you might not need sharpening. You just might need stropping. Okay, so yeah, you know her. Todd knows her. If any recons with colored scales and XHP. I'll have to see. I may have one or two of those. You show two sharpeners. One was the landscape current name of the other. The second one was this one. This one right here is from Cold Steel. And I've been pushing that Lansky one for a long time. And I, I didn't realize Cold Steel had made one. And it's just a little thing. You pull this out. Now, this the Lansky will sharpen quicker. I mean, it's just a matter of... This one will take longer because you have to get in with this to each individual serration. And then that's for the small serrations. So you get in there, and let's just say this, my fingers are serrations. So you get in there, just basically getting that burr for the other side. And then you go to the next one. And then this side is for the big serration. So you get in there and get all that done. And then you go through the back, you turn it over, and you just basically strop that, strop the uh, burr down. And it... It turned my so I gave away my my black talent at at Blade Show Texas, and I got this one. The one I gave away is rippier than this one because I sharpened it with with that thing. So yeah, let's just I'll just show you real quick what what I mean. So that's a that's tape. That's not a bugger. So I'll just let you know, I wasn't I wasn't cleaning my nose with it. That's tape. So anyways. So you just take this and you run it in through one of the, and you just kind of get in there. I think I did like five or six times for each one. I think it took me like five minutes to get through the whole thing. See, 
Right, just that. You can hear it. Put a little burr on there. And you just go back through and then just kind of like just drop it out. So you just kind of just drop out the burrs. And it, it came out super rippy. So it's super easy. Choo, choo, choo. Otherwise known as Lacey Lace. Lacey Lace, okay. Hey, Greg, good to see you. Cold Steel 5 Max is the best. Cold Steel 5 Max is freaking awesome. It's just amazing. Motions go up to 12 microns for a serious aggressive edge of 0.3 or 0.1 for mirror finishes. Yeah, I haven't even gone that low. So uh, it's not mirrored up, and there's no telling what would happen at that point. Any 4 max and 20 CV, you might be unloading. Yeah, I'll be unloading some 4 maxes and 20 CV. Hey, El Cap is here. Good to see you. All right. Greetings from the Dark Kingdom of Bavaria. Sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> Welcome. I'm not even going to try that name, even though I want to try it. Icorn Shinshrek. Icorn Shinshrek. How close was I? Is that horrible? Did I just start an international incident? Did I just call somebody a bad name in Bavarian? So yeah, if you have, if you have one of these, all right. If you have a black talent or any of the cold steel serrations, that this little jobber here is a uh, is awesome. Okay, so. Let's see, anything else going on that's cool? What are y'all doing? I mean, do y'all have anything cool coming in? Did y'all get anything cool this week? Or I ordered something for my uncle. My uncle's always wanting me to order stuff for him. And I don't I don't I think if I order for my uncle and I don't say it's for myself, I can actually say something about it. So I ordered him a Guardian Tactical out the front, the 040 and L Max. So I got that for him. He was wanting one. Of, he was wanting one really bad. One, one, one of the Guardian Tacticals. So I ended up getting that for him. I got smudgy on my glasses here. All right, there you go. So I got that, and that's all I can think of right now. Oh, and then I always wanted an outro, but I can't justify the price tags. Get. There's a company, I don't I can't I can't tell you who, but I can't tell you. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to lose my my money. I don't want to lose my sponsorship. But yeah, have you cooked some barbecue for yourself recently? Yeah, I smoked a pork butt not too long ago. It was awesome. If y'all are not smoking pork butts, if y'all like barbecue and you're not smoking pork butts, you're missing out because that is the easiest thing to do, period. If you want to get into smoking meat, don't don't jump in with brisket, don't jump in with ribs, don't jump in with anything else. Get a pork butt. This is I'm gonna tell you how to do it right now. So easy, it's so simple. You can't you can't mess it up. Get a pork butt. Now there's gonna be a fatty side. What you want to do is score that fatty side. So get get some depth in there you know some good scoring in there take whatever nice barbecue seasoning you like and just cover it just cover the whole pork butt chunk it in your smoker at 225 and then put on like a 13 hour timer don't go i mean you can you can go and get crazy with it and inject it and stick barbecue in its little crevices or not barbecue but garlic cut little crevices my brother does these things and injects it with stuff and then, you know, you can time it where every hour you got to go out and paint it with, you know, some kind of juice from the gods. And Or if you just want to be lazy and you want delicious pork butt that's lazy, stick it in your smoker, 225 or maybe like 230, whatever, around there for like 13, 14 hours. And just forget about it. Just totally forget about it. Put a pan under there to catch all the good juices and stuff. So if you have like a, a, a Weber tower or Weber Smoky Mountain, just put a little pan in there. That'll catch all the fatty goodness and juices coming down. And then at 13, 13 hours or so, you take it off and it's just going to, the bone's going to come out dry and you're just going to get your hands in there, 
get some gloves that you know are heat protected or just get some of those claws and just tear that mess up. It's going to be delicious. I did it. I did it a few days ago. I didn't mean to do it. I was going to get all crazy about it and paint it. And I was I was cooking like four things that, that day all at once. I was cooking a stew. I had a roast in the oven. I was cooking a, a bunch of uh, pinto beans. Some, I call them Grandpa Richard beans. But they're just basically uh, pinto garacho beans. And then I had that. And I just forgot about the pork butt. And it kept going and going. And for like 12, and like 12 hours later, I was like, oh. It, I gave some to my folks and I gave some to some other people. And they're like, this is the best pork butt we've ever had. So there you go. Just make it easy on yourself. That's the easiest way to do it. Choo, choo, choo. Got a five mash and deep clip. Oh, that sounds cool. The engineer in me is intrigued. I use gunny juice emulsions because that's what I currently have. And next, I'll try stroppy stuff from Halfstone or Lacey's. I haven't heard of gunny juice or stroppy stuff. The F-16, I hear, is a decent budget OTF from a friend of mine who uh, used to do videos on other knives. Hey, Dion, good to see you. And then there's DoorDash. Well, I've used DoorDash too, so. Hey, David, always good to see you. All right, good to see you, sir. Gregory, nice to see you. Thanks for the cooking story. I was just trying to be helpful. I'm not I'm not an expert or anything. I I see these things on Instagram, and these guys are like, first you take the meat, then you take the meat, then you cut it this way, and then you do this, and there's like 17 steps, and then you fry it, and then you put wrap it together. I can't do that. I, I'm like four steps in, and that's all I got. So take meat out, coat it, stick it on the smoker. That's me. I'm about two steps away from shutting down. Hey, oh, Father, I'm good. How are you doing? doing? I'm doing really good today. I haven't slept. I haven't been asleep since yesterday, but I'm doing good. I made it through my Spanish class without being, I mean, she's probably there laughing, my teacher, but I didn't feel like I was doing horrible. Of course, it might be one of, like, one of those scenes in a movie where the guy's talking and he's just on drugs and he's just, he thinks he's eloquent and he's not. He's drooling and falling all over himself. What movie was that? The guy was drunk off his rear. Thought he was being cool, but he wasn't. <clears throat> so, let's see. What else? I think that's about it. We call that Hanky Hill Spanish. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But that sounds about right. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I had these two. I know it sounds weird. So I'm trying to find people to speak to in Spanish. And I had these two ladies lined up to speak to, like, in a Zoom call. And I spoke to them both. I, actually, the one wanted to meet me at this Mexican grocery store. And we we spoke Spanish for, like, 45 minutes. Just walking around speaking Spanish. It was awesome. It really was helpful. And this other one I had a Zoom call with. And then that, now they won't return my calls. So I'm thinking next time I'm going to wear like a mask to, to these people. Maybe that was it. Gregory, I have not participated in a chopping contest in a while, a few months. I got one on the 17th of this month. So I got to go to Oklahoma for that. But. And then, then I'll be in Tennessee at the 1st of May for the national competition. Yeah, I'll keep one of those luchador masks. That'll be cool. Then I'd have a reason to speak Spanish because I'd be a Mexican wrestler. Hey, Dugram, how you doing? No, it's all right. Right through here, I still have some pain. I'm, I'm worried about... Like, I can lift weights and even a little bit of arm wrestling. I'm just worried that the the jarring is going to 
mess up my wrist. So I don't know. I might be chopping left-handed in Oklahoma just to give my wrist another month or so to take it easy. We'll see how it feels. But it's feeling it's feeling pretty good. It's a little bit of little bit of something there. But you know, you get old, there's always a little bit of something somewhere. Oh, you are that whip guy. With me, the whip guy? Hey, Michael. I don't think I said hi to you. <clears throat> I don't know who the whip guy is. Getting old sucks. But like my dad says, it beats the alternative. <laughs> it beats the alternative to getting old, which is not getting old. I'm trying to stave off some of the old age stuff, you know. I don't want to. I don't mind looking old. I don't mind, you know, different things about being old. I would, I would like to have my my eyesight back. That just, that just went like in the last five years. All of a sudden, I couldn't read. So I just you hit yourself close to the whip team. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm the whip guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy. Yeah, I'm telling you, none of that was made up. That thing is a stinger. So like somebody whack you and. With that thing. I asked my mom to come over and do it. She wouldn't hurt me. I was like, Mom, you used to whip me all the time. But now with a whip can, so that's where she draws the line. Belt, yes. Paddle, yes. Razor strop, yes. Whip cane right there at the edge of no. Ever try Cambo? I have not tried Cambo. Was that like a ointment or a drug or Car, car getting old is great it means you survive all the stupid stuff yeah there's a couple of things i probably shouldn't have come back from but you know but i did so here i am yeah i can't what stupid things yeah it's done a lot of stupid things but yeah i feel better about it it's like my son Oh, frog poison. No, I haven't tried that one. No. <laughs> I haven't done frog poison thing yet. <clears throat> it's like the toad that you scrape his stuff off his belly and then you see colors. Is that the one? My son always tells me, Dad, you had a lot of adventures as a kid. Yeah, I had adventures. We used to, well, I've already told you all the, the mountain lion story, but yeah. Just all kinds of crazy adventures in your kids. Yeah, everything's pretty much intact. I could probably do something with this shoulder, maybe a little surgery or stem cells or something, but pretty much. Yeah, they should call them adventures. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, let's see. What else? What else we got? We've got a bunch else coming. They're supposed to be sending me some stuff to look at by the end of this month. So maybe I'll have some interesting things to look at. Otherwise, I'm just going to chop into stuff. But I do have a Viking axe. I can see how well a Viking axe does against the pork belly. That sounds like fun. Toad is different. Combo makes you puke, but it makes you different for like three weeks. You need to go outside to have adventures, which sadly today's youth has to take to do. Yeah. Yeah, there's some new stuff coming out in Atlanta. All the stuff that, a lot of the stuff that was shown at, at SHOT Show will be available in Atlanta, is what I'm told. And then there's, I think there's a couple other, excuse me, a couple other things that aren't we're in that shot show that might be showing up exciting things. So we'll see. Things I can't talk about. I'm very glad I grew up right before everything became internetized. Yeah, no, I understand that. You know, I've heard a lot of criticism of this last generation. I forgot what I don't know which generation they're Z. So, yeah. But 
you know, if, if you know, it's hard to say that if we had access to the kind of technology and different things that they had, what we'd have done. You know, I went outside because it was go outside or mom found things for me to do, clean the house, scrub the toilets. She, she always had something. And my room wasn't that exciting because my brother lived there and he was violent and an angry, angry person. So yeah, that's why I went outside. But if I had a place to go with a handheld video game, I don't know if I would have gone hunting for snakes under rocks. Gen Z, Gen Alpha is 14 under. Okay, yeah, my sons are Gen Z then. So yeah, they're my son's not at all outdoorsy types. I mean, they like it outdoors, but they're not like we were running through the fields and chasing stuff. And they're definitely not uh, sports-related people. I was never an athlete, but I always liked playing stuff, you know, football, baseball, basketball. My kids are millennials. I should have millennial kids. My sister's kids are millennials. Hey, take care, Eddie. It's always good seeing you. I was always outside of my dog. Yeah, yeah, we had a good dog running running through the countryside with with Keeper. He was a good, good hound. And, uh, yeah. Hanging out in the frog ponds and the, the caves and the holes in the ground and the different things, old buildings and stuff. It was a lot of fun. I'm not saying I would trade any of it for, but you can kind of understand. And I was talking to my aunt about that the other day about, and she's, she was just concerned about how dangerous it is nowadays. But it's not any more dangerous than the way it was back then it wasn't like we were in less danger it's just we weren't inundated with the idea of how dangerous it was so if you're walking through the neighborhood and you got 14 serial killers you know on six blocks but you don't know about it you feel safe but if all of a sudden the news is flashing there's 14 carrot serial killers on your block and the six blocks are now you don't feel safe, and that's that's the difference. You know, 24 hours, seven days a week of news of people being abducted, people being shot, you know, kids getting hurt or whatever. It's different than it used to be. Yeah, we were free-range kids. Yeah, lawn darts, totally true. Yeah, lawn darts. We used to have dirt clawed fights, rock fights, the acorn fights. We'd throw it, whatever was available, we'd throw at each other. And if you got hit, you lost. So <laughs> you not only got hurt, you lost. Oh, we used to play uh, tackle the guy with the football. I mean, who does that? Whoever gets the football gets wiped out. Just jump on the dude, and but you know, nobody would, and everybody would go after the ball. It wasn't like the ball would sit in the middle of the yard. Everybody went out. Yeah, crab apple fights, whatever you could have. Yeah, we can't say the name of that game, that's for sure. But yeah, tackle the guy with the football. That was always a game, you know? And then, but people would still go get the ball. They didn't care. They knew they were going to get it. And broken ankles and arms and legs. Or what about the, the merry-go-round? Yeah, you see that on memes all the time, but unless you really were on that thing, you don't remember how painful and dangerous it was. Or the 12-foot all-metal slide with no safety rails on it. Yeah, that's, oh. yeah there's all kinds of crazy stuff we survived, which is awesome. Broke my arm climbing trees. My brother. A brother broke his arm falling out of a tree when he was a kid. I think my dad did too. I never never broke anything like that. Yeah, the all aluminum slide, 90 degrees, five degree sunlight. It was like you might as well deep fry the back of your legs. So yeah. Yeah. But you know, 
nowadays kids have their own their own deal. It's just a different thing. And I think as long as you've got kids, then you understand what I'm about to say. That you just want you just want them to be good people. It don't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. My son's never crossed the, the goal line with a touchdown or scored the winning bucket. I just want them to be happy and good and well adjusted people and kind to other people. And they are. So I shared my left arm with someone grabbed my foot while I was going over six foot stockade fence. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I told a story on one of my other channels. There was this girl. We were on the merry-go-round together, and, you know, when you're, like, eight or nine, you're always flirting with little girls and stuff. And so I said something that was not horribly mean. I don't remember what it was, but just mean enough so she would chase me. And so she started chasing me. And I don't know if you remember those slides. So here's, here's like this house, and then they have like a slide, like a big wide slide, and then they have like a crawly thing on the side, and then the steps coming up the back. And then I forget, maybe something else on the other side, but it was like this big square built like house thing, and then this big wide metal slide. Well, so she was chasing me, and I jumped over the slide. I was fast back then. I, I wasn't a large American like I am now. I was really fast for, you know, that age, and I had to be and stay away from my brother. Well, she went to jump over the slide and so here's the slide so this leg made it over but this leg slid in the mud and then everything went forward but this leg back here it got caught and just snapped her leg just so i felt like dirt but her sister was like i was like in fourth grade her sister was in eighth grade and her sister went totally nuts and was going to beat the mess out of me. And I was, just took off running. Because I knew she was violent. She was coming for me. I'd seen violence in the eyes of my brother. I knew what violence looked like. So I just took off. I was running. And the whole time back then I had hair. So back I could feel her fingers. Just. Like barely missing my hair. And I we used to live in a trailer park. So. If y'all ever lived in a trailer park, you know, there was rows up, rows to the side, rows down. I was just, I knew, I knew where my house was. I wasn't going to be able to make it to the house, get up the stairs to the doorway, and open the door without her grabbing me. So my only hope was to outlast this girl. And she was just like, hey, take care, El Cap. And uh, so, yeah, she didn't get me. I outlasted her, but yeah, that's how it went. <laughs> hey, one minute night for you. Good to see you. But anyways, enough nostalgia. I could be nostalgic all day. Yeah, everybody's everybody's got it, their own little thing. And I wouldn't I wouldn't trade my sons or who they are today for football trophies or stuff like that. Just, just the way it is. All right. I think I'm done. We went nostalgic. Talked about a couple knives. Talked about the future. Talked about the past. Then we cover all the bases. But um, look for me uh, Thursday. Thursday, I have another Spanish lesson, so I might come up here and... Thursday about about two o'clock. We'll do this again. And just you want to talk? Tell me. Tell me what you got to talk about. I also got to look into how to invite people on here so that we could talk to others and see how that goes. That would be fun. You know, I've seen some guys that have like four different squares open on their screen with people just coming in and talking. We'll see how that goes. But that might be interesting to do. It's good seeing y'all. Always good to talk to you. Thank you all for coming by. I know it's a weird time, so that means a lot that y'all take the time to come and, and do this. If y'all need me, Jimmy slash YouTube at Yahoo.com or hit me up on Facebook. And I will talk to y'all later.